the truth about cardio and testosterone. So in this video, I'm going to be diving deep into all the types of cardio that you can do. By the end of the video, you're going to know what cardio is best for testosterone optimization, what cardio you should avoid, how to utilize it. I'm going to lay out the science so you have a fundamental understanding rather than just me showcasing to you studies. But I'm going to lay it out properly so you understand why some cardio works and some cardio doesn't. So that being said, let's get into it. So there's three types of cardio. There's LIS, low intensity steady state. Things like walking at a brisk 3 mile per hour pace, cycling on a flat ground slower than 10 miles per hour pace. That's one type. So just walking, very low intensity. Your heart rate is low. Get to walk around, enjoy, look around, things like that. Then you have miss, medium intensity steady state. Things like jogging, ellipt elliptical stairmaster, so marathon runner, things like that. And then number three, we have HIIT, which is high intensity interval training. The most famous for that would be things like sprinting, right? Before I get into which one's better and which one's worse, let me lay down the science. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Alex Federsky and I help men master natural testosterone levels righteously. So let's lay out the science. So fundamentally, for you to have higher testosterone levels, which that's the goal, optimal testosterone levels, you need an optimal metabolic rate. Your metabolic rate can be measured by things like, I made a post in my community, by things like your heart rate and temperature, right? When you're a child, your heart rate and temperature is the highest. That's why you feel so amazing. That's why you have high dopamine levels. You're so creative, so on and so forth. Heart rate of a baby is between 110 and 160, right? And it evens out at around 80 to 86 when you're an adult, right? And your temperature should be around 36.4 to 37, 37 optimally there. So that's a good way to measure your metabolic rate. And your metabolic rate is governed by your thyroid hormone, specifically T3. So when you're producing a lot of thyroid hormone, which is measured by your metabolic rate, your heart rate and your temperature, this thyroid, which is T3 thyroid hormone, active thyroid hormone, with vitamin A and LDL cholesterol can be converted into pregnenolone. And pregnenolone is a precursor to things like testosterone, right? So here, pregnenolone, so you have the cholesterol, which is this part here. Then you have pregnenolone, which is this part here. Pregnenolone can go either to progesterone, aldosterone, cortisol, or it can go to DHEA, and then to testosterone or estrogen, right? If you wanted to go to testosterone, you want to avoid you know, having higher body fat levels, things like that, because body fat contains an aromatase enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. But the goal is testosterone. So for you to have high testosterone levels, you need to start with the fundamentals. Metabolic rate, fixed micronutrient deficiencies, fueling yourself properly, you produce pregnenolone, DHEA, and testosterone, right? So how does cardio play into this? Let's look at medium intensity steady state cardio. I've worked with boxers, amateur boxers. I've worked with individuals who do cardio. They play sports. And the main thing that I noticed with them, and you probably hear it all the time, is that they have a low heart rate, which apparently to the media, to the masses, indicates that you're healthy. You have a low heart rate. That means you're healthy, which is completely false. I've worked with these individuals, they usually have around heart rate around 40. They have a super low metabolic rate. They have no energy. They're very mellow. They can't sleep properly, high stress hormones. Because your body will adapt to the stimulus that you give it. Hence why I talk about not doing stressful things in your lifestyle that your body will adapt to. For example, 
I made videos about cold showers. If you're tanning your body and you're teaching your body to adapt to a stressor like cold, it's going to lower your testosterone. I made videos about it. Check them out. But here specifically, if you're going to be consistently doing things like jogging, you're teaching your body to preserve energy for a prolonged period of time. Imagine if you had a high metabolic rate and you ran for hours on end and every day. You will burn through all your resources. So your body is smart. So what it does, it lowers the metabolic rate. So you have a slower metabolic rate. So you're not burning through all your resources. Right? So hence why I do not recommend jogging. Because you're teaching your body to have a low metabolic rate. And that's a no-go. So that's crossed out. You don't want to be doing this. It's a no-no. Then we have things like lists. Low intensity steady state is perfectly fine because you're just walking. It doesn't stress you out. It's nice and relaxing if you do it properly, if you're walking in nature. So this will be testosterone boosting because it lowers cortisol. It improves your dopamine levels. It's anti-serotonin if you do it right. With clients, I always recommend if you're doing cardio, you're walking somewhere, do not take the same route constantly because serotonin is responsible for structure, doing the same thing over and over again. Doing new things is what is dopamine boosting, right? So taking a different route, going somewhere else when you do the walk. So in increases your dopamine levels, lowers your serotonin, boosts the metabolic rate, boosts testosterone levels. So it's an overall enjoyable process. When you do this, I do not recommend speed walking because you're getting into this area right here. So it has to be nice and relaxing. So this is good. It's too bright. Okay, now. H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training. So looking at this study, Sprinting is a form of a full body exercise. You're activating your entire body. If you're an individual that has more muscle mass than the normal individual, you will know when you do a sprint, you get a full body pump. For some reason, your chest is pumped up, your shoulders, everything is pumped up because it's a full body exercise. And the formula for optimal testosterone is activating as much muscle po possible in the shortest period of time while staying under your stress threshold. So sprinting or HIIT is very powerful for testosterone production. When you do sprints, be aware that it's stressful for your nervous system. So I wouldn't have it on my rest day in between training days. I would treat it like a training day, either have it at the end of your workout or have it as a workout, right? Another thing, when you see these online ab workouts, six pack ab workouts, HIIT, that's not high intensity interval training, that's just interval training. True HIIT training is a ratio of, I believe, is one to six rest to work. So if you're sprinting for 30 seconds full out, you need a minimum of three minutes rest. If you're doing like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, that's just interval. That's not true HIIT. Like, if you do it properly, you can max do two, three sets and it's getting more and more intense. Like, when I was doing my certifications for personal training, I remember my instructor, um, he, he was talking a lot about this, like the way I'm saying, like all these ab workouts and all these things are not true interval HIIT. When, he, when we did proper HIIT, like after three sets, you're on the floor, you can't breathe. You're just so tired, your CNS is finished. He even mentioned that he had times where people would literally just fall asleep, just literally on the spot, just finish the set and just fall asleep because the nervous system is so fatigued. So when HIIT is done properly, you can do two, three sets because think about it, you're going to failure max out full 
for 30 seconds and you have three minutes rest. And if you do it properly, you will really boost your testosterone if you do it right. Making sure there's recovery, things like that. So HIIT is powerful for testosterone production specifically. So avoid this, utilize this strategically and use this on a daily basis to improve lymphatic movement because you have just like the circuitry system, you have the heart pumping. With the lymphatic system, you don't have anything pumping. What you have is movement going from cold to warm, contraction and relaxation, right? Moves all the fluids. So this is very powerful, improves blood flow throughout the body, improves recovery, things like that. Getting more oxygen into the system, which then will boost more testosterone levels, so on and so forth. So yeah, this is the truth about cardio and testosterone. It doesn't get more complicated than this. Hopefully you found some value in this video. And if you have any other topics that you want me to cover, drop them in the comments below. And yeah, God bless. Peace.